our show in conversation. Today we have with us Mr. Sushil Sehgal, a very well-known and respected personality in the shipping industry. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Mishra. Thank you for inviting us and to be part of sharing this with the fraternity. Thank sir, you. can I request you to give us a brief introduction of Sehgal Sea Trade? Sehgal Sea Trade has been there for 30 years plus. We have been in the ship chartering activity and our motto and objective has been to always add value to our principles and what they do with, together with the local domain knowledge that we have uh, in this region. So, of course, the over the period of 30 years, the whole situation has continuously evolved. You know, pre-Lehman yes, Brothers, the idea was always uh, more on a first-come business now it's more to who gives bricker value. It's become more like a contingent consulting so that unless you add value, the principal is not willing to take your advice. So you have right. always to drive yourself with some innovative solutions and add value to the principal's activity. And that's what has been our objective. Thank you, sir. Thank you for a very wonderful introduction, sir. More than 30 years. That's a big achievement, actually. Thank you. Uh, sir, we would like to hear from you, sir about the current market trends in the driver cargo industry and also we see there is an improvement in the recent weeks we have seen in the uh, freight rates in the industry uh, could you share with us yes the the recent improvement in the freight in the rates and in the industry has been primarily driven by one of the largest bulk commodities and which is uh, the iron ore the iron ore uh, demand is still very healthy globally yes, sir. Uh, the earlier part of this uh, year in january end we witnessed a tailing dam accident in brazil which uh, resulted in a big uh, impact on the ton mile movement of cargo so in these six months which we have seen uh, the brazilian exports come down but going forward going ahead we expect that in this year brazil will would have will probably be exporting on a net basis about 27 million less. About 9-10 million is going to be there in this coming for, forward six months. So the average would be now about 33 million against 26 million in the previous six months. And if you look at Australia also where the Australian ore into China, the Australian ore also has uh, volume is coming down. That's why the prices are uh, healthy for the commodity. But again, during the next six months of this year, Australian exports probably be around 70 to 73 million, vis a vis the initial six months of 66, 67 million. So you're seeing an overall growth in the cargo flow of iron ore. And in the Cape size, there has not been much uh, tonnage increase because there have not been much ordering of vessels. Whereas in the other segments like Kamsar Max and the Handy Size, yes, there is some overhang of uh, the other tonnages coming in. But again, the seasonal factors are keeping them buoyant. The South America grain season is uh, doing fairly well. So the Kamsar Maxes are well utilized there. And the Northern Hemisphere summer season is just about starting now. So the demand for coal in, in, the, in the Northern Hemisphere is also expected to increase. So these are factors which are uh, giving a good buoyancy to the freight markets. But sir, is it sustainable? Will BDI continue this trend? The freight markets which people should realize or understand is that the freight is ultimately on a long term basis over a period of time always mean reversing. When I would say that mean reversing means the ultimately it returns to a mean level. So if one was to look at the freight rates for uh, or the Baltic index BDI, as you would say, from 2003 until 2019, where we are about probably end of June or July, it's uh, the average of the BDI is something around 2,500. So on a long term basis, the BDI will hover around, you would probably have the peaks and the lows, but on an average basis, the BDI would should be uh, uh, 2500 uh, levels and uh, the also the other factor is that you know with the new IMO regulations on the Marpol so lots of vessels on the larger size are going in for uh, some uh, scrubber retrofits and also the markets have been so weak in the last three or four years that there's not been much risk capital or new capital coming into shipping so the order 
book on the dry bulk side has been a bit slow over the few years which will sustain the dry bulk uh, freight markets because if you see one of the first times that we are going to actually see a negative growth in uh, vessels yes, which happened only in 98 or 99 wherein the fleet growth was only negative 1.4 and 0 0.9 in Sir. 2021 we'll probably see a negative growth of the dry bulk side uh, of about 0 0.9 percent demand one can always uh, anticipate to be very volatile because of various factors of an accident or because of the uh, trade wars the supply side is very stable because you can anticipate or forecast that this is the supply which is coming. So as long as the demand is there and the ship utilization is there, I think the market will stay pretty healthy. That's a, that's a very uh, good thing to hear, sir. And I'm sure that everybody will really like what you're saying and we hope that it stays like that. So my next question will be about the coal imports in India. We have seen, sir, that... Uh, last few years the government had actually announced that CIL the coal India limited will be able to meet the domestic demand but we see that we have increase in the import quantities what is your take on that sir see the the coal demand has uh, far outstripped the coal production domestically and which is sir. actually on a on a one basis is quite healthy that means the there has been a healthy demand for power in India India because we had our elections, the economy was also doing well. So the demand for power has been there in the country. And because of the demand for power, there has been a necessity to import the coal. The domestic coal does have its limitations on movement because of infrastructure, railway networks and regulatory considerations like forest mining approvals and such related issues which uh, restrict the easy or large availability of uh, domestic coal so our focus i think should be probably on cost efficient power for the growth of the economy and if if, if it's got to be imported coal then let it be and i think on a forecast basis this is purely a forecast i think by in 21 we'll probably see thermal coal imports going up to about 180 million plus into India. Right, sir. For shipping fraternity, at least it will be good, I would say. Yes, I think, <laughs> uh, yes, what we have to see is that shipping is actually global. So we have to take part in the global transportation. And sir, uh, sir. sir, also, I would like to hear from you about the iron ore imports into China and how is it affecting the market? See, the iron ore prices in China have been healthy which shows that there is a demand for iron ore in uh, China. What we had a incident, as I mentioned earlier, the aberration because of the, uh, the accident in uh, Brazil. This significantly reduced the ton mile of the iron ore moving into China. Sir. So if you see a, a Bra Brazil China round voyage is probably about 75, 76 days. A Australia China voyage is only around 35, 32 to 35 days. So it's almost the, uh, double the ton mile uh, impact. So I think as long as uh, the Brazilians and the ore is coming in a more sustained and continuous flow from uh, South America, I think uh, this is going to help the ton mile uh, for the iron ore trade into China. Right, sir. So last but not the least, a very important question. What changes will you suggest to the policymakers with respect to maritime sector in India? Well, the maritime sector in India has had its challenges because, you know, we have two segments. One is the international trade and one is the cabotage trade. So talking more from the perspective of the international trade, capital, uh, the shipping is a very capital intensive activity and uh, I think the government uh, is also aware of this. They have tried in the past with the uh, legislation, the merchant shipping bill which was introduced in 2015 and subsequently withdrawn in 2000, yeah. December 2016 to create a dual registry. So the the issue here is that overseas financiers are 
quite deeply concerned about the mortgage laws in India on how to foreclose on those kind of mortgage to take a repossession of assets in the event of a default. So your interest costs become very high. So I think uh, what we should probably look at is not just Indian flag tonnage, but Indian controlled tonnage, Indian tonnage, which is operated from India. It's, you know, if you look at maritime countries like Denmark or Singapore, where they have built a sustained operating, uh, ship operating uh, model so as to build the maritime activity in the country. And uh, I think the ROFR, which the government is considering, it's a very good objective to have the ROFR for Indian built ships. But the timing for that, I think the country should be ready for that. We probably firstly need to build our ship build repair capacity so that we are able to be a ship repair destination and then we move to the next level of being a ship building country you see you have to look at china or south korea they first were a renowned ship repair destination and then they have gone into with the expertise to build ships so if you have to have build in india indian build ships we first need to do the repair and then go into developing and building the shipyards for construction of the ships so firstly, it would be surf from India and then go into the next step of make in India and ship management companies also, as you were, you were discussing earlier, are also a source where they are based all over the world, but they're all, a lot of them are of Indian uh, origin. Origin, yes sir. yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And we will request all of our viewers to send us their comments and very valuable, valuable information you have shared with us, sir. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you.